Guys, I just want to show you a quick tip, which is kind of my secret weapon these days, is Luminar. Luminar is a plugin. For me, it's the best plugin on Lightroom that you can find. And let me show you. This is a photo I took a while back of the Hollywood sign from behind. I wanted to do something different. And um, it's a photo that's really dark. I, honestly, I should have bracketed it. I, I took it too dark, and I wanted to salvage it. So the first thing is I'm going to do a pano. So I set it to both raw files, and I went to Photo Merge, Panorama. Uh, and in the panorama, you have different projection. Usually what I do is I like to use this option of boundary wrap. You see here, boundary wrap, because it's just going to squeeze your panorama and make everything fit into it. All right, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to click on merge. And that's the, the final uh, panel. You see, it's way too dark. So uh, I'm going to do what I do best in Lightroom. And then we'll see what we can do in, um, in Luminar. So I'm going to start by opening up the shadows, as usual. Uh, on this one, I'm going to boost the white. I really want to burn the white. I really want to see the CD. I'm going to do my black point. You know, it's just the usual stuff. If you follow my channel, I'm going to bring down a bit the highlights. I'm going to boost the overall exposure. Now, this is way too green. I don't like this. So I'm going to go to uh, first daylight, which is going to make it a bit warmer. Add a bit of magenta. I love going to daylight and magenta because it gives really strong blues and strong oranges uh, or you know warm color. Let me take this out so you can see better. And now I'm going to use uh, a brush. I like to do that sometimes because it, uh, this, you see the eyes goes to the brightest part of the photo and we had some CD lights there. So I'm going to lower the exposure and lower the saturation and I'm just going to brush here so that people don't have the attention on this part. You know, I want that. I want them to have the attention on Hollywood. But you know what I'm going to do first? I'm going to crop it. And I'm going to crop it. Uh, I have a rate. I'm going to take the ratio of 16 by 9. Because I like to print. Uh, and this is actually for print. So I wanted to respect the 16 by 9 ratio. And I'm going to crop it and go as much as I can on the Hollywood letters. Uh, I've got a lot of pixels to play around with. So that it's kind of cool. Something like this. I really want to go on Hollywood. Yes. And then I'm going to go back to my brush and I'm just going to, you know, I'm, I'm lowering the exposure and taking out saturation. Okay. But now I need to do the reverse of the letter. So I'm going to click on new. And this time I'm going to go and boost the saturation. I use the middle mouse and I'm just going to paint, maybe add a bit of clarity at the same time on the letters and a bit more exposure. I want, you know, people to see the Hollywood letters, you know, because that's the whole idea was to shoot Hollywood there from behind okay and then you see at the same time i'm taking out saturation because there was a lot of greens on the letter that's kind of like not nice and you know you, you with brush you can really guide uh the eyes of the view the viewer you know maybe it's, it's a little too much i like to not go over one something like this but it's kind of cool okay uh I, oh, actually wait you know, i'm gonna make a new brush this is really catching my eyes so I'm going to lower the exposure and the saturation. This is not nice. It's just catching my eyes for nothing. And uh, yeah, you can move this around. Well, I went way too far. It's way too strong. I just, I want to make it a little less. But check it out. Uh, you know, before the brush trucks and after the brush trucks, you know, I'm kind of happy with that. Uh, on this one, I think uh, I'm going to make a big, big circle here in the middle where I'm going to invert, feather it, and I'm, I'm going to go to exposure. And I'm going to add a bit of exposure and clarity to make the CD pop even more. Okay. And I'm going to add a bit of vibrance. And, you know, I'm kind of happy with the result, but I want to go to the next level. And usually when I want to do that, that's when I go to Luminar. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to export. And Luminar 2018, edit a copy with Lightroom adjustment. What that's going to do is take in everything that was done into Lightroom. And I kind of like, you know, you know, there's not much I can do more in Lightroom at this point. And I really need some of the tools you can find in Luminar. All right, so I'm just going to give you a quick, quick, quick tip on Luminar. If you want to know more, you've got to check out my workflow course. You'll see an ad for it at the end of this video. I go into a lot more into Luminar. So basically, Luminar works with filters. It's got a whole bunch of filters. Uh, you can just click on add filters. You can see them all. 
there's a few uh, that I've put into favorites. So I'm going to go to favorite. And the first one I'm going to use is the uh, advanced contrast. I love what advanced contrast does. I don't th I don't know of any software that does what it does. So basically you just boost, for example, the highlights and it's going to add more contrast, details, and saturation in the highlights. If you go to uh, mid-tones, it's going to do the same thing. If you go to shadows, it's going to do the same thing. I really wanted this photo to pop. And most of the effect that I wanted to do is boom, done right there. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to click here on add an. Uh, you don't even need to click add filter. Actually, I'm going to use the um, Accent AI filter. Now this one has like a little bit of a HDR look to it. If I boost it all the way, you'll see it's going to basically, uh, you know, give a little HDR look. I only want to add a little tad of it, but I don't like. You see, now it's making this a little bit brighter what I did in Lightroom. So I'm just going to click here, take a little brush. And I'm just going to brush the effect. Let me make my brush a little bit bigger here uh, with uh, the size. And I'm just going to brush the effect only on the letters and on the beginning here, not everywhere. Okay. And um, so as you do that, as you paint, you will see that uh, it creates a little mask and boom, there you are. You can see the before and the after of just that one filter. It's so cool. It is so cool. Um, and basically, yeah, I think I'm just going to add one more on this one, which is Detail Enhancer. I'm going to boost the details a little bit, the small and the medium details. And then I'm just going to take a little brush and I'm going to brush the effect where I want it. Same idea, just here on the letters and on, on, on the foreground here. Okay, and one more, I'm going to do some dodge and burn. I could do it in Lightroom, but I like to do it also there. Plus, it's got a different look. The dodge and burn from, uh, from um, Luminar is a bit different. So you click on Start Painting, and then you're ready to dodge and burn. So I'm going to darken first. I'm going to boost the size here, and I'm just going to dodge this part here again. So I'm going to darken this part at at 50% strength, and maybe... At a lower percentage, I'm going to do the same thing on the sky, make my brush a little bit bigger and just brush on the sky here to close my photo even more. OK, and then I'm going to go to lighten and I want to lighten a little bit some parts here, not everywhere, just where the legs is and maybe here and voila. And then when you're done with dodge and burn, just click on, on done. And you are done. Now, I don't like what the detail on enhancer did. So the good thing is that it's a stacking mode. So I can just go here and boom, erase in the, in the stack of filters that effect. And check it out. That's the before. That's with all the before down in, in Lightroom. And that's the after. So I'm going to click on apply. And I'm going to shoot the full before and after from start back into Lightroom. All right. So we're back into Lightroom. So that's the original RAW file. That's the one that has been retouched, you know, uh, stitch and retouch into Lightroom, and that's the final result uh, with Luminar. Uh, it's uh, quite a change. I would not have been able to do this photo without Luminar, or there's a little sensor dust here that I forgot to take out, but boom, let me take it out, and there you go. So guys, check out my new workflow course here. It's really the best technique I have found to do what I'm doing today. It's all there. Check out the little ad that's going to explain what it is. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. I am so excited. I have a new course coming out, which is very peculiar, called Surge Remedy Workflow 2018. The idea of this course was to update you on all the latest Lightroom version, Photoshop version, Aurora, uh, Luminar. You know, this software, they have so many updates that my workflow has completely evolved and changed over the last two, three years. And so I did this course taking the opportunity of my latest workshop in Los Angeles, where you are going to be in the seat like if you were on the workshop. The first day, we're going to go to the Griffiths Park. And that's the first photo we're going to do. Uh, this is a panorama. You can see all the, that's the before. And that's the final result, which is like a crazy 20,000 pixel panorama. Then this, we took another panorama as the sun was getting down. And that's the before photos. That's the first stitching. And then I was like, I got to get that trees out, which is so complex because the tree is against the city. And I'll show you a workflow in Photoshop to take out the tree and everything that's annoying in a photo to get this result. Then later on, we walked and hiked to get this Terminator view. I call it the Terminator view because that's the view you get on Terminator 1 and Terminator 4, where you have the observatory and downtown comprehensive against it. I'll show you the full retouching to go from this to this. 
I use Luminar to use some secret advanced contrast and different filters to get this result. The next day we went to the Venice Canal and we didn't have any good sky there. But I'll show you, you know, all the bad framings that I took, all the good framings that I took, and also how to replace the skies and how to find the right sky for the right photo. For example, this was kind of like a blue hour type of sky. And then later on, we, we got this you know, sunset type of sky, but I added the clouds to get this result. And choosing the right sky for the right photo is so important. And I'm gonna go over that in details. And then later on, we went to the Venice Beach and got this great sunset photo with long exposure. I'll show you the entire workflow. I use different plugins to get this result. You know, it's really how I work today. Then the next day, we went to downtown Los Angeles, starting off at the Walt Disney Concert Hall, where I'm gonna show you a new technique. Actually, I took this eight photo of the Walt Disney Concert Hall and believe it or not, Lightroom refused to stitch them into a panorama. So I used another workflow with Photoshop to get this result. I used some Luminar also for some extra sun rays and some extra details and advanced contrast that are really cool. While we were waiting for the sunset in downtown Los Angeles, I shot this portrait of my daughter and my dog and I decided to make you know a fine art photography out of it. I have this rule that if the colors are not amazing, go black and white. Uh, I also took a photo of the downtown city hall of Los Angeles and made it into a fine art. You know, as we were walking down the uh, highways, I also shot this photo of downtown Los Angeles and I used a new workflow to get this really, really fine art, dramatic black and white using some presets in Luminar, which are amazing. So later on that day in downtown Los Angeles, we shot the highways and this is the um, this is a before photo. I'll show you a technique where you can stack up different light rays to really get this dramatic, you know, highway type of photography. This is another one that we shot a bit later on, the, you know, during the night, that's the before and the after. The next day we went to the nicest beach in California, El Matador Beach, and this is uh, a normal exposure, this is an underexposure. I'll show you how to retouch X exposure and then to blend them into Photoshop to get this result and then into Luminar to add some advanced contrast to really get a photo that's gonna pop and that's gonna make you popular on the web and on social media. The last project that we did out of the 14 project is a portrait that Kelvin did of me where I show you the whole retouching to get this sort of, uh, you know, contrasty, desaturated look. So in total, you have 14 different projects. I'm gonna give you all the raw files. I'm gonna give you everything. This is my most up-to-date training. You know, it really takes into account all the update that's been done on all the software. This is truly how I work. It's three hours and 15 minutes long. It's got, I'm giving you all the raw files and you got a great release price down below this video. This is one of my most favorite course ever. And there's just one course you should buy from me. It's this one. Check it out. The Surge Remedy Workflow 2018. No. Oh, one second. Hey guys, I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please give it one thumbs up. Also, don't forget, leave me in a comment anything you want to learn on photography, on Lightroom, on Photoshop, on plugins. I will do my best to fulfill your wishes. Uh, yes. Yeah, R2 says don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and to click the little bell so you get a notification every time a video comes out. See you in another video and may the force be with you. R2, please say goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye.